It's a beautiful day to be alive. And today I wanna to share with you one of the books that has had the most amount of impact on my life. Now, I am not a huge reader. Frankly, I love Audible. I love listening to audiobooks. That's normally my jam. But this is a book that I actually sat down and read cover to cover a couple years ago, and I just have been in love and continue to reference it. And this book that I'm talking about was written over a hundred years ago, which just blows my mind in the terms of it being so relevant in today's day and age. And that book, my friend, is The Law of Success, the original edit by Napoleon Hill. Now you probably recognize the name Napoleon Hill. He's the author of Think and Grow Rich, which was a very popular book and still is today. This book was actually written 10 years before the Think and Grow Rich book came out. And in this book, it's basically broken down into 15 lessons. Now this is the original edit. So if you look on Amazon, there is an updated version of Law of Success, which has 16 lessons, but I'm a big fan of the OG. It also looks super dope on my uh, shelf. It just looks old school and I love that. And so in this video, I wanna break down my top five favorite lessons from this book so that you can have a little bit of a preview inside of this monstrous 400 page beast of a personal development book and perhaps even gain a little bit of curiosity to pick up a version of your own. So let's go ahead and jump into my number five favorite lesson from this book. Lesson 13 is all about failure. Now, I have had my fair share of failures throughout my life, both in business and in personal, from failed companies to a failed marriage to all of the little failures in between. And let me be honest, failure has never been a big friend of mine, and I've frankly felt a ton of shame around it. And that was until I read this lesson. And it really changed the way that I look at failure and how I actually pursue some of the things in my life today that feel big, that feel audacious, but could result in a failure. Now in this book, Napoleon goes on to write, and I quote, let us see if that which is so often looked upon as failure is not in reality, just temporary defeat. Now I love that, and that was one of the sentences throughout the book that just spoke to me so highly because that's exactly right. If we look at our failures as being devastating and something that we cannot recoup from, which is very much a part of the mindset that I had for a period of my life, it's not going to empower us to actually move through that failure and take the lessons learned and reframing that as a temporary defeat is just a great way to look upon a challenge that uh, we might not have overcome, but along that challenge, we're able to learn the lessons that will help us in the future challenges and you know march our ways towards success rather than yet another failure. So I love it and I have been scratching my whole terminology of failure to temporary defeat. Coming in at number four is lesson number five, and it's all about action. Now, this lesson for me was just super solid reinforcement to some of the things that I already believed, but it's something that I needed to read again. Have you ever kind of read a book or you're like, yeah, I totally know that, but I needed to read it again? That was this lesson for me. And Really, one of the things that stood out to me as it relates to how Napoleon Hill put it, and I quote, knowledge as a mere ornament may bring a certain amount of self-satisfaction to all who possess it, but it is useless to all others until it is put into action. Now, I absolutely love that, especially in today's day and age where we are bombarded with content, whether it's a YouTube video like you're watching right here, whether it's a personal development book that you can purchase on Amazon, whether it's a podcast, like there is so much knowledge to be learned at our fingertips and so easily accessible that knowledge really isn't the issue. 
It's what you're actually doing with that knowledge and the actions that you're taking to utilize that to put things in your life into play. And so this lesson for me was just one of those like, yep, okay, I gotta double down there, which is just, it's always good to get reinforced by things that you already know, but you need a little reminders of. And again, that's what this was for me. Coming in at number three is lesson number nine entitled Attractive Personality, which is kind of a funny title, but really what he's trying to articulate is the importance of building character in ourselves. Character is such an important part in the way that we're able to connect and communicate with our friends, family, um, co-workers, colleagues, and everyone in life. Our character is basically who we are at the core. And in this, he really emphasizes how important that is to continue to evolve and build on it. And one of the coolest things about this lesson is he has this character building formula, which I totally geeked out on and absolutely put into practice. And I wanna share that with you. It's three steps and the first step goes like this. Select those whose characters are or were made up of qualities that you wish to build into your own character. Create in your imagination a council table and gather your characters around it each night, first having written out clear, concise statements of particular qualities that you wish to appropriate from each. Now, I, I totally did this. I did it in the morning and it, it was so much fun. As part of my visualization meditation practice, I basically built my council table. And around that table was, was all dudes, but I wanna share it with you because it was quite um, the consortium of characters. And around the table sat Elon Musk, Gary V, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Peter McKinnon, and Tony Robbins, that's right. And what I would end up doing is pulling characteristics from both of them, which I ultimately admired. For example, Peter McKinnon, which I'm sure you know, watching YouTube, I just admire his um, creativity and detail-orientedness. Gary V, I admired how just like punch to the face, cutthroat, honest that guy is, like totally radical candor. Um, the Rock, I loved his charisma, his muscles, and he's just super athletic. Tony, I just love his approach to personal development and achievements. And then Elon Musk, that dude's just wild, man. I just love that he thinks nothing's impossible and he just goes for it. And so those are some of the examples that I used in this practice that I just, I had a ton of fun with over a long period of time and I just got a ton of value from. The second is let the dominating thought in your mind be a picture of the person whom you intend to be, the person whom you are deliberately building through this procedure. Now for me, as I came out of this visualization meditation with my council table, I would literally just sit there and try to meld all of these characteristics together and look for opportunities which I could lean into each of them in order to practice. The third thing that he mentions as part of this formula is Find one person each day, more if possible, in whom you see some good qualities that is worthy of praise and praise it. I love that because it really made me step out of myself as I'm talking to a friend, a coworker, or, whom, or whomever, and start to recognize the qualities that I see in them, which I admire, and then pay special notice to it. One, it made them feel awesome, and two, it made me a lot more um, attentive during any sort of conversation or communication that we had. Coming in at number two for me is lesson number eight in the book, and that is the habit of performing more service than being paid for. Now, when I first read this, I felt like, wait a second, I'm not really sure I'm on the same page here because I value my time and my worth very much. But it wasn't until I read this part in the book and I quote, by establishing a reputation of being a person who always renders more service and better service than that for which you are paid for, you will benefit by comparison with those around you who did not render such service, and the con contrast will be so noticeable that there will be a keen competition for your services, no matter what your life work may be. Now to me, that is the, 
like the ultimate thing in my mind that I needed to actually switch the way that I would think about it up in terms of how can I go above and beyond for my customers, my clients, and my business such that I am that person who they're seeking out and I have more and more opportunity that has come my way. And let me tell you, it works. In my particular business, I do a lot of you know, tech and web support. And oftentimes I'll go above and beyond what they're expecting when they email me and ask me a question. I'll either send them a video or just take care of things for them. It's that little extra effort of going above and beyond which has allowed me to stand out and really create loyal customers and advocates of my product, my brands, and my company. So for me, this was one of those business game changers which has really ultimately allowed me to continue to grow and succeed in my professional endeavors. Coming in at number one is actually lesson number one in the book, and that's entitled Definite Purpose. Now the way that he describes what your definite purpose is goes like this. Your definite purpose in life should be selected with deliberate care. And after it has been selected, it should be written out and placed where you'll see it once a day. Now, if you watch my magic whiteboard video from last week, which I'll link up here and at the end of this video, you'll know that I actually gave my definite purpose a section on my whiteboard so that I could read it and reference it every day. The way that he frames what a definite purpose is, and you could call it your mission, your why, it doesn't really matter what you call it. It's your North Star. It's what you're aiming for in your life. And the way that he puts it is it should be specific enough but yet broad enough to give you some guardrails and something to aim for while providing you some wiggle room in the way that you're actually able to get there. And the one thing that was just a huge light bulb moment for me as I read this is the way that this being present in our everyday life has such a dramatic uh, effect on our subconscious. And the way that he puts it is like this. The psychological effect of doing so is to impress this purpose upon your subconscious mind so strongly that it accepts that purpose as a pattern or blueprint that will eventually dominate your activities in life and lead you step by step toward the attainment of the object back of that purpose. And again, that's like really why I call this the magic whiteboard. Again, linked towards the end of the video, but why the definite purpose and actually writing that out has ultimately helped me understand where I'm truly going in life so that I can map my goals, start to develop habits around getting to that point so that I can, you know, reach the end of days and feel like, man, definite purpose, nailed it. And that is my quick rundown of this awesome, super thick book, The Law of Success by Napoleon Hill.